Hey everyone, finished watching the first episode of Saban's Masked Rider, Escape from Edenoi, Part 1. Dex, the alien prince, the mighty Morphin Power Rangers, minus Kimberly Mutt, is still trying to help free his people from his evil uncle, Count Dragon. Count Dragon has ambitions to conquer Earth as well, and has sent a Destructosphere, a sphere that transforms into a monster. It lands in a town called Leewood. We follow the Stewart family. The father, Hal, is working on some kind of device while his daughter Molly talks on the phone with a pair of goofy kids, Herbie and Patsy. They're planning on pranking Molly because Patsy is jealous of Molly getting a part in a school play she wanted. Back on Dex's planet Edenoi, Dex talks with his grandfather, King Lexian. The king tells Dex that Count Dragon plans on turning the people of Earth into mutants for his army. Dex, with his masked rider powers, are being sent to defend Earth. Lexian provides Dex with a disguise, a white prom tux, or a white motorcycle jack. Either way, it's not particularly inconspicuous. As Dex teleports away to Earth, the little furry creature Furbus is upset to see him leave. As Dex lands on Earth, an earthquake occurs. Molly and Herbie accidentally set off their own prank's booby trap and get covered in slime. Dex lands in the backyard of the Stewart family. He immediately tells them that he's from another planet. It's like, I don't know what the disguise was for. The family takes him in, thinking he's lost and confused. He explains once again why he's come to Earth. The young son of the family, Albie, is quick to trust him, but the rest aren't so sure. Dex uses his Edenite powers to display an image of his planet's history. This convinces the family. Later that night, Dex senses something coming towards Earth. It turns out to be Furbus, the furry little creature from earlier. The kids are worried their father is allergic to animal fur and doesn't like animals inside. On the news the next morning, Dex sees a report of a monster attack and goes to stop it. The kids watch as he transforms into Masked Rider. Molly peeks over her fence just in time to see Dex teleport away. She mistakes him for a giant bug. This is a promising first episode. It's fast-paced and sets everything up quickly. One thing that stands out, though, this wasn't intended to be a standalone show. Originally, it was intended to be a spin-off of Power Rangers. So there's a lot here that assumes the viewer has previously seen the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers three-parter, A Friend in Need, that introduced Dex. The villains, in particular, here don't get much screen time. The planet Edenoi also was fleshed out a lot better in the Power Ranger episodes. Here, it's just a weird place that's left very quickly. The Power Rangers connection was cut because the producers thought Power Rangers might end. Huh. They thought it would be a safer bet to have Mass Rider be a standalone show, and, um, hindsight 2020 and all that. Uh, Mass Rider would probably be far better remembered if it had a stronger connection with Power Rangers. At the very least, the rights issue with it might not be so bad. The Stewart family is likable. I've heard criticisms that the multicultural family is unrealistic, but I don't think so for California in the 90s. The father, Hale, and daughter Molly are white. His wife, Barbara, is Japanese, and son, Albie, is black. Albie mentions being adopted and tells Dex maybe his dad can adopt him too, after Dex says he lost his parents when he was young. I think Molly is also supposed to be adopted, but for some reason, I always thought she was Hal's daughter from a previous marriage. Hazy memories mixed with other hazy memories, I guess. I remember watching Master Rider when I was really little, like three or four. I wouldn't see much of it after that until I became a teenager. I watched some episodes on this new video site, YouTube, and later bought a UK annual book with comics and stories about Mass Rider, and later I bought a bootleg DVD set from a shady DVD website. I have a lot of nostalgia for Mass Rider, more than VR Troopers, which I didn't see at all until I was well into my teens. The various actors for Mass Rider have some interesting trivia. Candace Keita, who plays Barbara, is still regularly working as an actress and model. T.J. Roberts, who played Dex, had some starring roles in martial arts films when he was younger, but appears to have retired from acting and went on to be a martial arts instructor and producer. David Lee Stenstrom, who played Hal, also provided the voice of King Mondo and Power Ranger Zeo and a few other characters throughout the original Saban era. Renan J. Slover, who played Molly, appears to mostly have had commercial roles outside Masked Rider, and now works in real estate and interior design. Ashton McCarn, who played Albie, has apparently retired from acting, but I'm not sure what exactly he's up to now. Looking up his name mostly gives me results for Masked Rider, but there's also a gangster rapper, Ashton J. McCarn II. 
Maybe that's him? He'd be about the same age. He made an appearance at Power Morphicon a few years ago, and it looks like he's doing okay, regardless of whatever's become of him. This one was a little-known fact until a few years ago. Vern Troyer was one of the actors who wore the Furbis suit. I, met, I had the opportunity to meet him a few years ago at a convention and ask him about his time on Mast Rider, and he said that there were a few other little people who played Furbis. He also made no attempt to hide that he didn't like the show, but was grateful for the experience and what he learned while working on it. He passed away, unfortunately, a few years back, but left behind an impressive list of roles, most famously as Mini-Me in the Austin Powers films. Another element of Mass Rider that's familiar is the music. Most of the music made for Mass Rider would go on to be reused in Saban's dub of Digimon. It's actually more well-known for its appearance there than in Mass Rider. Some scenes from Mass Rider would go on to pop up in Power Rangers Time Force, as a uh, TV show Nadira is watching. Mass Rider is a mostly forgotten show, remembered mostly for its infamy of not being a very faithful adaptation of Kamen Rider Black RX, and also for just not being very good. Good or bad, I love the show. I even chose the main character's name as my own. My name isn't really Dex Stewart, but it's normal enough sounding that uh, a lot of people think it is. So yeah, that's it for this one. I really enjoyed this first episode of Mass Rioter. This was a really fun thing to look back on, and after 90-some episodes of VR Troopers, this is a really nice change of pace. Uh, VR Troopers, I love it, and it's objectively a better show than Mass Rider is, but I think Mass Rider provides a bit more variety in a show than VR Troopers does. VR Troopers was very firmly locked into being the same thing over and over, and Mass Rider has a bit more leeway. I wonder if that's where the name of the town came from, Leewood, huh? Hey, oh, whatever. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya. Will Furbis need a flea con? Or will Masked Rider save the day? All this and more on the next exciting adventure of Masked Rider.